All right, step one in making this Deluxe Reverb more reliable is for me to go through all the pin connectors on the octal sockets and slightly compress the cup connectors in using this uh, dental pick. So I have good metal to metal contact when the tubes are reinserted. It's a little bit tedious. You don't want to bend them too much because you can deform them. And then uh, if it's too small, a pin will just crush it and you'll have a bad socket. After I do this, I'll flush them with isopropyl alcohol a few times, just so that I'm sure that I will have good contact between the metal pins uh, on the tubes and these metal receiver cups. I'll have to use an isopropyl alcohol because it'll flush away any yuck that might be in there, dirt or corrosion from the ears but it won't leave a residue. You know, I've seen people use uh, deoxit for that. If you use deoxit, use it sparingly, um, it can help, but then you have to flush the deoxit out because deoxit is conductive. You don't want any conductive stuff in the socket, which can make a path from this pen to that pen, et cetera, et cetera. So if you use deoxit, then you have to use isopropyl afterwards. Uh, I've seen people use WD-40. Do not use WD-40. It never leaves, it's always in there, and it is conductive. WD-40 is for cleaning metal. It's great for that, but you don't want it in your tube sockets. All right, when I first flushed these out, the first stuff that came out was orange. That was just a little bit of old flux. And uh, you can see a little bit of brown here. But overall, these are running clean now. It's just the color of wet paper towel. So. Those tube sockets are clean. And a lot of fenders, especially those that have been played in bars with a lot of smoke over the years, you know, it comes out just dark, dark brown and dark, dark orange brown. Really gross. It takes a lot of flushings. This was pretty simple. Um, the reason I'm being very thorough on this is this amp had a squeal uh, that the owner reported like a tea kettle. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure that all the connections are good. I'm going to go look at the preamp stuff as well. All right, if you go back to the first video in this series, all the octal tubes had a bad wiggle. Now that I've tightened the socket, the wiggle's a lot better, but I can improve it even more. Okay, I know Deluxe Reverbs did not have these bear trap tube retainers, but Vibroluxes did, Super Reverbs did, Twin Reverbs did, Pro Reverbs did. This was just a cost-saving measure on the Deluxes, so uh, they deserve it. Here's that same rectifier tube after the bear trap. Almost no wiggle whatsoever. It will apply to the power tubes as well. It'll really reduce vibration and chances of poor or intermittent contact, um, especially once these tubes are all being vibrated by the speaker. So I think this can only help. In examining all the preamp tube connections, this plate and this grid on the phase inverter, those solder joints don't look the best uh, I've ever seen. I'm going to see if I can freshen those up. This is just, you can see a slight edge to things uh, where the solder begins to end and the metal of the pin continues. and That can be uh, a sign of an iffy solder joint. These are things that could also explain this wheel. I'm actually not going to just reflow that because you see all this little excess here. I'm going to neaten up the wiring with shorter connections so i'll show that here's the before here's during where i've got all the old solder off the pins and i've got everything trimmed to the new length and the uh, new connection is tinned during part two where i've got the tinned wires going into the pins and they each have a little j hook so there's some mechanical support beyond just solder before I add the solder. Here's the after with everything soldered cleanly. Solder joints don't always look good on camera just the way the, uh, the lens picks up reflections, but they're all good and clean. And the wires are neatly dressed. And uh, let just pause this for a second. Here's the excess wire I removed just from this one stage. Now, I will be doing the same thing to more or less degree going through the rest of the preamp. This is the before on that because there's all that 
CBS Spaghetti. Remember that this amp has a thud to it in the tremolo. Well, all this excess wiring could be the cause of that. So check out what this all is going to look like in just a moment with neat and shortened leads and good solder connections. Here we have the tremolo wire that goes to the RCA jack and it's routed here past all this reverb wiring. So I'm going to move it so it's wired along with the, the tremolo stuff away from this stuff, which actually is audio signal. That might help too. All the preamp wiring has been changed and neatened. Uh, much shorter lengths, much greater separation from stage to stage. And I know that every solder joint is now reliable. Here's the excess removed, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you were to put this end to end, it would be over a foot, I think. Yeah. You know, the difference is fairly dramatic. And by uh, getting the LFO circuitry and the tremolo way separate from this audio part and this audio part, and moving this tremolo wire away from the reverb audio stuff, hopefully that tremolo thudding in the background is gone now. And if the amp still has a squeal, I know a lot of things it's not. Next up is to deal with these chassis grounds, which are being made to the transformer mounting bolts, which work loose because the weight of the transformer deforms the chassis over the years and flexes these connections. So let's undo these two wires. This is the HT center tap wire from the power transformer. This is the ground for the reservoir cap. Take those to the side. I'm going to remove this nut. Put it to the side. And then using my big chassis iron, which is very, very hot. Let's get this old solder out. Once I get that, I want to get the old flux up. So, big pieces of it just break off. I'm not using a lot of pressure with this little flathead screwdriver. I don't want to scratch the chassis yet. The isopropyl alcohol helps, it gets the yuck up. Right here, the old nut that was on there was just a plain nut that had a little bit of help from the, the teeth on this ground lug. I'm going to replace it with a Keps nut, which has the teeth built in. I always start these by hand just in case you have a strip thread. I like to really crank them tight. With some manufacturers of transformers, I found that the screws are relatively weak. You can actually snap them off. These are older fenders. These old Schumachers, pretty damn rugged. It's really hard to do that. All right, so that's now a secure connection there. Let me tighten this Keps nut, Keps nut up while I'm in there. That one's good. Let's plan where the new connection is going to go for these grounds. And I'll put it right here. Um, which is pretty much the same place it was, just it's not going to be having that transformer weight be part of it. So what I like to do is I take a small flathead screwdriver and scratch the steel in the chassis in a crosshatch pattern. So I want to really get the solder a good surface to grab onto and bond with as it's all heated up. And then I want to get any dirt, old uh, steel that I might have scraped up 
doing that out of the way, I want to have a very clean surface to work with. So a bit more alcohol. A lot of times there'll be an original factory ink stamp here, and I try to be very careful not to erase those with the isopropyl alcohol. All right. I'm going to heat it real quick with the big iron to drive off any alcohol that might be sitting there. And uh, I do most of my wiring with this uh, 0.031 diameter solder, which is good for most things. I can really control the flow for uh, chassis connections. I'll take a double loop of it, kind of twist it up a little bit so I can apply more at the same time you don't want to starve a joint. I wash my hands before I do this because I don't want to introduce impurities that I can easily avoid. And I wash my hands after doing this because it does have lead. And I don't want to go the way of the Romans. So I've got this length of doubled up 31. And I'm going to just tin the section here. I really want to make sure the chassis there is getting hot. That I'm not just putting a ball of solder on top of the steel. All right, that's going to hold. Now I'll put, I did it a little bit wider than necessary so I can do each wire a little bit separate from the from the next and that can happen just gotta not cuss too much that's a good solder connection now you can see this brown stuff around the edges that's flux comes out of the solder and I'll just kind of scrape the excess off the edges and I'll take some isopropyl alcohol clean that up a little bit a little bit, a little bit more During COVID and the shortages of things that are antibacterial and antiviral, it's been difficult finding isopropyl alcohol. Each people just get it reliably at Walgreens or whatever. Whenever I find some when I'm out, I snatch it up. All right, that gets the worst of the flux off. And uh, where did I put my little bit of solder? Here it is. I'll make that a little bit prettier. All right, that's a very reliable connection for that ground and it will not be affected by the transformer. I'm going to do the same thing for the AC. Move that. Do the same thing for the AC safety ground. Then I'm going to make this wire longer and do the same thing for the bias ground, though. I will do that off camera. It's the same process. Okay, now I've got the HT center tap and reservoir cap nodes going to chassis here. I've got the bias. Uh, ground here along with the heater balance resistors and I've got the AC safety ground here right by where the cable comes in and I uh, get, uh, took the cable out, moved the holder back so I could buy some space so the ground wire is now longer than the hot and neutral. So if this were to pull out of the amp, the neutral or hot would break before the ground would. So that's safety code. I already showed the rest of that being wired properly in the first video. So it is now time.
for me to put all the tubes back in and set the bias and see how the amp is sounding, but that will be in a different video.